I've always wondered about your your entry, so to speak, in WCW. You came in and in short order, championship, championship, championship. Uh, especially my, my personal favorite, the Saskatchewan Hardcore International <laughs> title. <laughs> I how, hated that name. So as this is pitched to you, who pitches that to you? And how do you feel when you're told, yeah, three titles were putting on you, even if they do have you give away two of them? Well, the thing is, that was never pitched to me because they were making it up as they went along. Oh, wow. So it's, you know, you're going to win the U.S. title. It's like, okay, cool. And that one I knew about, you know, several days ahead because uh, Johnny Ace, who was the agent at the time for it, he called me with, uh, you know, you're getting a big push. You're winning this tournament. We need to come up with what your finisher is going to be because I'd been using the half crab up until that. And he was undecided or unsure whether he would be able to convince all of these guys to tap. So he was thinking we should probably do a pinfall finisher. But after, you know, several minutes of debate, he's like, ah, screw it. I'll just make them all tap out. I'm like, okay. But it was, you know, even I think the day before, because I know there was still argument going on because uh, Big Vito, who I beat for the hardcore title, he was really tight with Russo. And he had talked to Russo the day before. Still is. And at that point, I was beating him in a U.S. title match on Nitro when he was beating me in a hardcore match on Thunder or vice versa. But we were each going to defend our titles and successfully retain. And it was that day of that they decided, no, let's put two titles on Lance because he was arguing and complaining about having to lose the title at the show. So it's like it was last minute they decided that. And then the other one, it's like I found out, you know, again, an hour before it happened. So I never had a chance for anything to sink in. It's just boom, boom, boom. It's like, oh, OK. So you just you're, you're busy doing the job and you don't really think about it until you have to go to the airport and realize you have three title belts and your carry on and security is going to be a real nightmare. I think a lot of people would be surprised to learn that Elix Skipper was the oldest of that trio. Like a lot of people thought he was like 20 when he came in. Yeah, he me was- included. Yeah, he was like he was like thirty then, and man, he, he's a guy I miss seeing in wrestling. Uh, he's done he's done a lot of good stuff, and somebody I think it was Ross Foreman actually told me they're like no, he was like a almost like a hired gun in the restaurant world as like he will fix your restaurant, and they oh, said really? that he, they said that he took a pay cut to come to WCW to wrestle. That's that's kind of amazing. Yeah, because it was a show, an indie show I was supposed to do late in my career or something. And he was originally going to be there and then wasn't. And someone, I'm like, well, why couldn't Elix make it? He's like, oh, his daughter had graduation. And I'm like, from preschool? And they're like, no, his daughter's like 22. I'm like, yeah. how old is this guy? Yeah, he's, he's and I, I didn't realize because I thought he was like an 18-year-old kid when I worked with him. That's the thing. Yeah, I did too. Because they presented him as so youthful and all that stuff. And, and he obviously executed it very well. 